we went. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Keith Levine. Hello, hello, this is Keith Levine. Well, Keith, of all the places that I thought I was ever going to interview, on the balcony of a bar at the Mick Farron Memorial gig wasn't really one of them. Under a flyover, dare I say it, under the fucking Westway, which, uh, you know, I hate the clash, and I hate that fucking song, that underneath the Westway, in and out the shops, it's a big traffic system, and it just sucks, or whatever the words are. Fucking... You should know what the fucking I, words well, are. Well, no, I shouldn't, because I left the band, didn't I? You know? I, thought, yeah, but I thought you wrote that. No, no, no. I, I, I'm credited for writing one song called What's My Name, and I still don't know what my fucking name is, and I wrote it in a sound check, and uh, quite interesting, a gig at the Mucky Duck, the Black Swan, the famous Black Swan, I don't fucking know. Um, 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 Sex Pistols, Clash, and I knew, I, was, I, kn I knew I wasn't going to be in the band anymore. I knew, and, and like, um, but the thing is, I, I hung in for two more gigs, because I, we were going to play at the Roundhouse. How can you not play at the Roundhouse for a start? With Patti Smith. Oh, fuck. So fuck me. You know, I, it was like, I'll do that gig and then I'm, I'm done. We're done. You know, and it, it was like one of the things we knew, we knew it was over gigs ago with me. I just didn't fit. You know, I just didn't fit. Started the band with Bernard Rose and Mick Jones, got Paul, whatever, whatever. Do you want to know this shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. And, and, no, I don't know. And, and then, um, you know, um, other people came into the band. We got Joe in the band. Me and Bernard got Joe, and they didn't meet on a fucking doll queue. You know, me and Bernard poached him from a 101 gig. It was the best thing on the fucking scene. And that was just down the road, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, um, it's, uh, all these gigs in West London, the best fucking band out there. You know, f for the sweat and the rock and roll was was the 101 at the time. We got Joe, talked him into it. He came over Davis Road squat. We're in this room about this big. I'm playing my Les Paul. I'm playing some of the 101 as tunes as I know them, and playing other tunes. He's like, "Oh fuck it, I've got to do it. I'll do it." You know, so he does it, and you know, they start turning into the Clash, and that's okay. And it's just like, and I'm getting really moody. I'm depressed now, but I mean, I was pissed off. So I, I was, I stunk. You know what I mean? And they're like, Keith, you're so fucking moody, and they're saying, "No, oh, it's drugs, it's speed, it's this, it's that." It wasn't. I fucking hated my situation. And, and we sort of all agreed, they didn't kick me out of the band, we just all agreed, you know, it's like, look, take me out of the band, you've got a great fucking band, you know, I don't fit. So I'll go, no problem. Okay, so I went. Then I, then, um, I, I went and hung out with my mates that I learned to play guitar with, I was in, in Pinner, but at this gig, at, um, the Black Swan, the Pistols were playing, John had a similar situation that, he was going through this thing, he hated the fucking band, you know, he hated Steve, Steve hated it, everyone hated him, everyone hated everyone, right, They're really. And, uh, you know, so we both got this stink around us, John's sitting on his own, I'm sitting on my own, this is in the book, you know, this, this is, I think this might have been a preview, I don't know, but maybe not, maybe, maybe not, whatever. I'm sitting there, he's sitting down the end of the hall, none of my band are talking to me, None of his band are talking to him. I walk up to him, because we, we were mates, and I knew him. I was like, well, you look fucking happy, you know? He's like, you know? And I just said, look, if, and I know this is never gonna happen, the pistols are no more, we should do something. Mate, we should do something anyway. It was sort of, I was hoping you were gonna say that, you know, something like that, you know? Yes, very much, yes, I like it. Next thing I know, fucking Sid's dead, everyone's dead, no pistols. I'm working with Ken Lockie, who I'm working with now, by the way. And uh, I run into Paul Young at Great Portland Street, because I, I was around Ken Lockie's. And uh, what are you doing here? Where the fuck have you been? I've been in Pinner hanging out with my old mates, real people. And this fucking punk rock scene was awful. And then uh, he's like, and I said, yeah, I know. I, I, all right, I'll, I'll come in two days. I went to John's place and the rest is, well, most definitely history now. Um, you know, we formed Public Image, Public Image Limited. We're not a band, we're a company. And that, that's, that's what happened. I remember when I was still living in this little town in North Devon, I went out and bought the first Public Image single. And it was the sound of your guitar. I was just thought, fucking hell. Good single though. Yeah, Good cover. and your guitar sound on that, it's never been better. It's just one of those classic things. Well, you obviously haven't heard my new record, but yes, I see. Not yet. Tell me about your new record, no, no, Keith. No, no, I'm not trying to tell you about it. You I'm can, you can tell me about it. I'll send it to you. 
Sir, I'm looking forward to it. My new record is called Search for Absolute Zero, which is actually um, a physics project. Not the record, but the expression. And uh, it's sort of been put together over the last at least seven years. And I did these shows with, um, with John, um, Ja Wobble, John Wardle, the bass player from Pill. It wasn't a pill reform. I think we did it as a sort of anti-pill, if anything, because we were, because we were the fucking best, and we we had this kid, Nathan Maverick, singing, who is a Johnny Rotten clone because he does the Sex Pistols Experience and Public Imitation Limited. Ha <laughs> ha. No, it's fucking funny, but that is good. but he is good, and blimey, he's so like John. But like I say, John when he was good. I mean, I remember saying to Wobble, like, big warning, big warning, Wobble, when you meet him. You've got to keep saying in your head, he's not John, he's not John, you know, do not kill him, okay? And like, uh, and don't get freaked out, because he's not fucking John, he's not John, you know? And I remember Wobble met him, and he saw me afterwards, and he went, fucking hell, Keith, I'm so glad you said that to me, because he's so like fucking John, you know, because he looks so like him, and he can act like him. You know, I think he's studied being like Leiden, you know? Um, back to my record, so, we, me and Wobble made a record called The Yin and Yang, which was an EP, and still is, available on iTunes, and, uh, and that was great, and we made it in about two and a half minutes, very fucking good. Um, and then we're doing these gigs, we only did about eight or nine, culminated in Japan, really good, okay, good shows, we chose them, you know, didn't make loads of money, we just chose good shows, intimate, and, uh, and because of that we ended up recording more stuff. Um, in Mark Layton Bennett's studio, he was the drummer. He's Wobble's drummer, bald guy, fucking great. And uh, really great, really good drummer. He's really into music, very genuine, just fucking good, you know? And uh, so what I did was I took it pure because we knocked the stuff off, just like the metal box. One take, bang, one take, bang, one take, bang. Wobble goes home and me and Mark made this tune, search for, the, the final tune, Search for Absolute Zero. So, Wobble takes all these tunes and dubs them up, much like Betrayal, yeah? And I always said with Wobble, why didn't you put Betrayal out with Pill? You know, and he was like, you know, that's between me and him, right? But um, he did it again, he put out the Yin and Yang album, so I thought, fuck it, I'll do it. So I put out Search Absolute Zero, and the cherry on top in Search is these three tunes, there were four, but I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find the other one, that we made, bang, one take, one take, one take, yeah? And, uh, and then there's all this other stuff that I've done since about, I don't know, 2002 or something, you know, with different artists and what have you. Some of them are like guitar portraits, some of them are abstract, some of them are very eno e arty Turns out not many people say, did you not put lyrics on it on purpose? And it's like, actually no, but it didn't really come up. So there are a couple of tunes, I think, with vocals on. It's got 11 tunes and three videos on there and of course you've got the alternative version yin and yang which has gone down quite well they've both been out about a year oh, i'm looking forward to hearing yeah i'll send it to you oh, thanks. there's like three different versions of it i'll just send you the combination of it all. that's really good of you man thank you yeah it's well you're the sort of bloke you should do that to thank you you know I'd, if it was how it should be i'd give you the fucking album wouldn't i you know, you know what i mean i'm a rock and roll archaeologist all right and it's, I like to go away from the world problem paths and see what might have been. To me. To a point. Oh, I'm a complete, I'm a complete fucking romantic. That's good. I always like to, that's why I like bootlegs. I like to hear what something might have been if things that shouldn't work out a slightly different way. Yeah, I get what you mean. What potential, what could have been, what should have been yes. almost what exactly. actually was but yeah i get it like i've always wondered i remember i've always wondered ever since i heard that first public image single your guitar on, i always wondered what the clash would have sounded like with your own guitar there you go there you go me too <laughs> is there any of it recorded not really no um no, I've got to say, I, I did act, I did add a certain um, edge, for want of a much better expression, to um, the Clash. I made them go fast. Um, 
I wanted to do pop tunes. When I met Mick, rock and roll Mick, he, he played me um, I'm Only Dreaming on the guitar. He played it to me and I'm like, this is fucking great. I love this guy. He gave me his blue suede shoes. He had these winkle pickers and he gave me them, you know, and it was just great. And it was the best. And apparently I was the best thing he'd ever come across, you know, and it was great. It was just such a great thing. All we knew, all we wanted to do, Keith, what do you want to do? All I know, Mick, is I want to be in a fucking band. I want to form a band. I want to form a great fucking band, okay? No punk rock, no this, no that. You know, the, the, I mean, I think they were calling Patti Smith and the Ramones punk. I don't think the Ramones had quite come out when we had this, yeah. when we'd met, but Patti was around, and of course she was around, and, uh, you know, it was just great. And then it started getting... It's supposed to be punk rock. It's supposed to be the next thing, you know. It's supposed to be... I mean, we've had the beat, we had the stones, we'd had that, all that. We grew up on that. So they've broken so many rules for us. You know, how could we... And when they started doing what they did, it was like... You know, kind of very difficult. So hence, you've got no Kiwi on um, any any Clash records. And uh, there's no... There's no you know, outtakes or mysterious t takes or intakes or anything. I'm sorry. I'm so disappointed. I just love the sort of been. But fuck it, man. You've left, you've already produced such a body of work. And the stuff, you know, some of the stuff of yours I've heard over the years. It's fucking outstanding. I'm genuinely not happy with it as well. But all because of... That's because you're an artist, man. Because of problem, like, I can't believe, I get it. But I still can't believe the endless response the Metal Box gets. Because the Metal Box, with about 11 minutes more fucking um, focus, you know, whatever. You're like Search. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, man. I really am. Now, tell me you tell me about the work you did with Adrian Sherwood. Okay. Um, on you, Sam. Adrian was a friend of mine. Um, and, uh, I mean, he said, oh, Keith, you know, come, come, come to this. I didn't know what he did. You know, um, I didn't even know he was a producer, and uh, he's like, "Keep coming to the studio, blah blah blah, Basing Street." I turn up, he's playing really good fucking, I mean, really good reggae, yeah. Keep, I want you to play guitar and this stuff, yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, and I didn't play on tons and tons of it, but I played on quite a lot. Um, Bin Sherman, Devious Woman. Uh, I think I'm on some African Ed Charge stuff. Um, I'm on a lot of stuff uncredited. Um, and I just thought he was such a dynamite producer. Then he got it together to have, um, that's okay, uh, he, his own studio in, in uh, his house and everything. And it carried on with Tack Head, uh, more African head charge, Mark Stewart, Mafia, which I never got to be on. Hence, that's why I work with Mark now. I love it. So in a way, that worked, that worked out what should have been, because I wasn't on Mark Stewart and Mafia. I love that fucking record. Liberty City, all, those, all that stuff. Um, and sort of to make up for that, I work with him now and we're going to be doing some more shows and we just did some and he's fucking crazy. But, you know, that's the thing. He, you can't bottle Mark. You know, you can't market Mark. You can't genre Mark, you know. And well, he was with a pop group, wasn't he? Start off with. Uh, no, no. Not what a fucking back as well. Yeah, no, fucking great, yeah. He's as autistic as fuck, and that's a great thing, you know. And uh, luckily, in a way, he's got me because, um, you know, when I did these shows just recently, I was like, I mean, no rehearsal, nothing. Keith, you got to do this. Okay, I'll do it. Let's rehearse. Keith, we can't rehearse. I, I'm, I'm doing these gigs. What, the gigs I'm going to play on? Yeah. You know, okay, so I show up, do three numbers. One that we did in a studio, so I knew how it went. Um, and the other two, one, one Bowie tune and some other tune, I don't even know what it was, but we did it. Um, but we're going to do some more shows. I'll do the whole, I'll be doing the whole fucking um, show and it, it will be, it will be good. It will be good. 